Hey guys, Brooke Whipple here. Welcome to my channel. Although it might not look like it in the camera, it's getting dark. And I'm walking back into the woods to camp all by myself. And maybe this is something you've always wanted to try. Well, tonight I'm gonna walk you through the process. Stay tuned. I feel much better about everything. Well, they make the most eerie sound. Ooh, got this 38 on me. Shelter is a big deal. It's all good until it gets dark. And I hear him screaming, honey, honey. Don't let it get to you. Hot coffee on a campfire. It's like you're at the fair. I'm really huffing it because I don't have much daylight left. Literally, probably. 20, 30 minutes. I gotta get to my shelter, get a fire going, get set up before dark. Oh, look at this. Let me get a fire going quick. See that sky? Not much time left. It's a really cool bog over there. Oh, sun's going down. Here we are. Here's my shelter. Boy, look at this game trail here. That's a pretty good one. Goes to the bog. Yep, here it is. This is home for tonight. I want to get a fire going right away because it's super dark. I'm gonna have to get lights out just to film. My camera doesn't like this darkness. See it blurring out? Stand by. partially a moon tonight. All right, let's get some lights out. All right, guys, I got this joint lit up now. Sun is going down and my camera doesn't like to focus. We got uh, my shelter behind me. I'll give you a quick tour. I had to cool down. I got really warm coming in here. It's gonna be a half moon tonight. It looks pretty cool. It is quiet and silent. First thing I'm gonna do is get a fire going because uh, I can still see a little bit out here. I'm just gonna go gather some quick firewood, get a fire going, and then um, kind of settle in. Let me show you the shelter. This is what the shelter looks like. It is. It's pretty, it's pretty dry in here really. Uh, I haven't worked on this shelter in a while. There's definitely some gaps, but it's gonna do for tonight. It's not supposed to snow or rain or anything. But uh, this is gonna be home for tonight. I'm just gonna uh, put the camera down and get a fire going right now while I can still see. That's awesome. Look at that moon. Okay, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my fire starter necklace tonight, the one I made. All right. Birch bark and some of my homemade fire starter barrel rod necklace. A little ceramic sparker, a little tiny ferro rod. There we go. Took a little bit. It's a little harder with that little ferro rod. Beautiful thing about this country is the pines. And they really help you get a fire going quick. Which I just love. Love me some pines. It being winter, it's still a bit damp out here. But you can find these little twigs like this. Beauteous. That right there is one of the most important things you can do when you're going to be out here overnight all alone. 
get that fire going. It is like, it's just life. It's so wonderful to have that fire here to keep you company, give you light, give you warmth, be your friend. It's such a moral boost. I can't recommend the importance of a fire above almost everything else. Got to have a good fire. Now what I'm going to do now is head out with my headlamp and I'm going to get a bunch of firewood. But now I got this going and I feel much better about everything. And I'm cooling down. I'm going to have to get my sweater on. And then we'll think about setting up camp. Nighttime is a long time. I want to be out here with a fire all night. So I'm going to need a lot of wood. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's looking good. Beautiful. <laughs> Alright. That's a good little pile of wood. This is a puny fire. How you get this thing cranked up. dry stuff on here. All right. Now what I'm going to do is uh, get my stuff in the shelter, get my sleeping bag stuff set up. Some of these sticks out of here. One wet spot. Get that, those leaves out. He's snug as a bug in a rug in here. Some frozen ground in here. I got my sleeping bag. Here we go. Home sweet home. Dinner's coming. I got some long underwear. Throw those in. thing I bring with me one of these pads just a little piece of closed cell foam in the winter so you can be on the ground next to the fire and not get all wet uh, <laughs> finally sitting down is nice oh it's been a busy busy day it's been busy just in general I'm just too busy so it is really really nice to sit by a fire thing about being out here by yourself is uh, you can't let your mind get out of control for sure and keeping yourself busy keeping yourself occupied not getting it getting into your own head is super super important you know, gathering firewood making some food reading um, these lights are a big help of course I can't film out here without these lights so it's a non-issue I have to have the lights if I'm going to be able to film. So, but I just find it just makes the whole thing, whole place just so much more cheery. And I really, I really like that. Why oh, the smoke is going right to the camera. There, is that going to be a little less distracting? <laughs> smoke right in your face. I got to move this guy gotta light this joint up or you won't be able to see oh hear that coyotes I don't know if you can hear that Oh, they make the most eerie sound. Don't let it get to you. They're not going to come and attack you and get you and whatever else everyone else has been telling you. They're, you're fine. Yeah, they sound a little creepy, but... gonna be just fine. All right, what's for dinner? Got a nice fire. 
Got my little pot. Let's get some water in there. I got a special dehydrated meal today. So we're gonna get some some water going. I have no idea how much I need. Look at this. I thought about packed all my food in my son's uh, lunchbox. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna use today. It kind of was nice. I got to put like all my food stuff in there and uh, makes it just really handy to get to. It's chili mac with beef. That's what I'm gonna be eating tonight. Yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of the dehydrated foods because they're expensive. I got this one for free at a Banff Mountain Film Festival. <laughs> and so I'm going to try that tonight. Man, I hope this smoke goes the other way. Come on, man. I need to get it blazing so it stops smoking. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. rolling. That's a little better. So yeah, I'm going to put this in the fire and we can have some chili mac. Get that heating up. I'm just enjoying sitting by this fire. But I got some wet wood, I tell you. It's all standing dead, but it's, you know, still got a bit of moisture in it. It's not the best fire. Let's see what else I got. Yeah. Got a little beverage. Gonna have a hot toddy. Oh, where's my other canteen cup? Oh, I can feel the chill coming. It's probably gonna get into the 20s tonight. It's probably in the 30s right now, high 30s. It's probably gonna drop down to the low 20s tonight. And suddenly I can feel, I can feel that air kind of cooling down. Let's talk about protection for a minute. I always come out here with 38. It's a 38 special. This belonged to my dad. He was a police officer for 25 years. Retired. He gave me this 38 and uh, I, I really appreciate it. So I keep this with me. So this 38 is going to be right by my side. And if I need it, I've got it. But I don't stress about it. I mean, I don't. I'm not freaking out about anything. I just, I'm a female alone, and this gives me a little, this gives me a little confidence out here that if I were to encounter somebody or a situation where I needed a firearm, I've got one. I'm very comfortable with firearms. I've, I grew up with them, so this isn't a big deal. And the other thing I always have with me is bear spray, so either one or the other but a lot of times I carry both so I got a lethal and a non-lethal uh, way of protection it's just it makes me feel better and I know this uh, is it's a little bit controversial especially Europeans they don't understand Americans and their guns right I get that comment a lot why what are you so afraid of it's not really that I'm afraid of anything it's a freedom to have a gun I'm gonna celebrate that freedom by carrying and it's not concealed, so I don't need a permit. I just have it out in the open, and uh, it's just gonna be right here with me. If I need it, I've got it. Same with the bear spray. Nice thing about bear spray is anybody can handle it. You don't need any kind of special training. It's easy to use, and it's non-lethal. So that's just my opinion on it. You can do whatever you want with your own protection, but it's the humans I'm more worried about than anything else. You never know who you're gonna run into, and I want to be ready. I want to be prepared, and I'm. It's basically like a self-rescue situation. When you come out here, you need to be prepared to handle yourself with food, clothing, shelter, fire, water, and self-protection. That's my opinion. So I enjoy the right to carry, and that's a freedom as Americans we have, and I, I'm gonna observe that freedom. Oh man, my water, it's good to go. That is awesome. Let's check out this chili mac. Chili mac with beef. 
I mean, I wonder if I brought a spoon. Yes, I got a spoon. Sweet. How much water are you supposed to put in here? Three quarter cup. Oh, that's pretty good. I definitely have three quarters of a cup. Let's open this up. Oh my gosh. Glad I looked in here. There's one of those like do not eat <laughs> packets in here. All right. Let's get the water in here. Have some dinner. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing it. I don't know how much three quarters of a cup is. Okay. This is gonna be interesting. I don't usually eat these. So, we're set it next to the fire and kind of keep it warm. <laughs> now I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hot toddy ready. canteen cup. Let's move that hot water. Have a little little hot toddy with dinner. A little sip. Get that warmed up. Got a beautiful fire now. This is it's cranking really nice now. Love it. Just had to get some coals built up. It just wasn't very happy. I got plenty of wood. Plan on sitting here quite a while because the thing about wintertime camping is you're just you're gonna be sitting here in the dark a long time. I mean, what time is it now? It's only 6.40 right now. So, I got a long time to sit around before, you know, it's time for bed. So it's... Ooh. So it's nice to have a good supply of wood so you can just sit, sit out here and enjoy yourself. It is such an amazingly nice night. It warmed up today and melted a bunch of snow actually and um, sun came out it was awesome so there's no wind it's just calm and oh my gosh this is so enjoyable Maisie I broke poor Maisie's heart coming out here tonight she wanted to come so badly the whole idea to come out here tonight is to talk about camping solo and I knew somebody would say, if I brought her out here, well, you're not alone. You have your dog. So I didn't bring her tonight. She is completely heartbroken. She was zooming around the house. Every time she sees me grab a pack or, you know, she knows she gets to come on an adventure with me. So tonight she was all excited and I get in the car and I'm pulling. She just looked heartbroken watching me pull out. Poor, poor thing. Poor Maisie Daisy, she had to stay home. But I tell you what, let's talk about that for a minute. Bringing the difference between being completely by yourself and bringing your pet, bringing a dog. Now in my case, Maisie gets out here and uh, I've brought her out here before for an overnight. And she just, she freaks me out more than anything. Because what she's doing is sitting around listening for any little tiny thing. And it's nothing, you can't even... There's, it was, it's completely quiet out here. And she'll tear off into the darkness barking. I tell you what, that's unsettling. That'll get you wound up. So if you're going to go do a solo like this, I totally recommend that you really do do it alone the first time. Because your dog, if they're, you know, if they're anything like my dog, you're going to find something to bark at, whether it's real or not. And it's just going to make you nervous. It's going to make you unsettled. So... I definitely recommend coming out by yourself at least the first time. Your dog's just going to rattle you. Going to get you all freaked out over nothing a lot of times. Let me tell you another story. Dave and I were camping at Moon Lake near Toke. This is in Alaska. We had two collies at the time 
Huey and Millie, and we had them in the tent with us. Remember we set up camp in the dark, and we were all just tired, been on the road, and we're sleeping. And we woke up because Millie was growling. She's in the tent, growling, and outside the tent, you hear something out there. You hear something walking around, and then all of a sudden, this thing starts running our direction right towards the tent. And she's growling big time now, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, we're going to get attacked by a bear right now. There's going to be a bear in our lap any second. Both Dave and I both, you know, I'm like, something's going on, you know. We're both set up, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, bam, our other dog, Huli, comes slamming into the tent. Like somehow he had wiggled his way. I don't know if he got the zipper open or what, but he was outside wandering around. And then, I don't know, heard Millie growling and heard us moving around and then piled back into the tent on top of us. Talk about, about have a heart attack. Oh my gosh. And I remember specifically, we didn't have any lights with us. I don't know why we didn't have any headlamps. We didn't have any lights. It was just, it was awful. <laughs> So don't come out here with your dog, at least initially, so you know what it really is like to be alone. And plus your dog will just maybe just freak you out. Ooh, hot toddy, baby. That's looking good. Oh, the cup is hotter than the thing. Just let that warm up a little bit more. Let's check out this chili mac. And you know what else I got for it? I got some Fritos. I'm gonna crunch those up so I got some crunchies in my chili mac. This is gonna be awesome. I love anything corn. Mm. All right, let's look at this. Ooh, that looks pretty darn good, you guys. Look at that. Here we go. I'm gonna mix that up. Give this a try. Hmm. Not bad. That's pretty darn good. Hmm. I like the Fritos on there. Mountain House Chili Mac with beef. I give it a thumbs up. I got a little cup here. Because this one, it's going to be too hot to like drink out of. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Quite the meal. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, look at the fire now. That's awesome. Had to feed it a little. It was awful, awful small. Had the camera turned off for a minute. Heard the coyotes again. And I thought of something. That if you're eating something crunchy, you can't really hear what's going on, so... To put your mind at ease. <laughs> you know what else I got, guys? I got some Irish cream hot cocoa that Ken and Judy Chan gave me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some of that up and mix it with my hot toddy. I think that's gonna be pretty good. He's hot, boys. I need a stick. I need a stir stick. Let's 
see how that's going to taste. Ooh, that's good. Hear that? Coyotes are yipping. That's hot enough. I think I had some ashes in that one. That sip. Ooh, fire's hot. Your mind is going to be your biggest enemy out here. It's all good until it gets dark. And then when it gets dark, your mind wanders. And it can get the best of you and you'll never come back out here. So you gotta take control of your mind. One of the biggest things for me is shelter. I want a really good shelter Burn down my camera. Every time I move the camera, smoke goes to the camera. Hear that? Yeah, your mind is going to be your biggest, biggest problem out here. I would definitely recommend using some lights like this. Nothing wrong with that. It lights things up, lets you be able to just feel like you're not so alone out here. I've heard other people say, well, if you got the lights on you, everything around you can see you. Well, if you had a fire, it's the same thing. Yeah, I'm really lit up here. I have to be because of the filming, but it's no big difference. It's all good. First time I ever heard wolves howl. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. I was hiking backpacking across Isle Royal National Park. That's the, uh, that's the national park. That's in the middle of Lake Superior. Very, very cool place. I was only 14 at the time. And I had joined a club called the Wilderness Adventure Club in high school. And we, uh, we hiked the length of Isle Royal one summer. It was 60 miles from end to end. It took us about seven days. It was so cool. But I remember sitting around the fire one night and we're all just, you know, tired, we've been hiking all day and all of a sudden you hear wolves just envelop the darkness around you, howling. And it was, it was so cool. It was really, really awesome. And then of course, being in Alaska, you hear them in the distance, but it wasn't until, uh, I went to Vancouver Island for a lone season four and I got to see a couple wolves up close and personal. And of course I heard them howling all the time nearby. 
but to see them that close in camp was just exhilarating. It was really exciting and I was felt so lucky to see them. It didn't bother me at all. I was really excited to see them. I wanted them to get close. So I was filming them and it was, you know, one time was the middle of the day and the other time was like morning. And uh, it was just really, really awesome. And then in Mongolia on Alone Season 5, I heard the wolves howling all the time at night. And um, just something really, it's not spooky to me. It's really kind of comforting to hear the wolves howl. And it just really seems like you're in a special place when you can hear that. And here in Michigan, it's coyotes. They're everywhere. There's so many coyotes. And you always hear the coyotes howling. But they have a more yippy and kind of eerie kind of bark howl going on. And it, they're a little bit more unsettling, if you ask me, than listening to wolves. But you can't let your mind go there. You just need to, you need to keep focused on your fire and just anything but like how dark it is and how alone you are and what might be out there looking at you or stalking you or whatever you're thinking. It's just not the case. The hardest thing is, uh, yeah, you're out there and then it gets dark. And uh, it can be, it can be very unsettling. But I totally recommend lights, good fire, and I like being in a shelter. First thing I did when I got dropped on Vancouver Island for Alone Season 4 is get to work on building a shelter. I wanted walls around me. I wanted something secure. You know, and it's more of a psychological barrier than it is going to be an actual physical barrier. There's only so much you can actually build out of sticks. Um, but I think it's a good deterrent. You know, there it's bear and cougar country and wolves, but you know, I'm not worried about wolves. I positioned my shelter where it didn't seem likely that any animal was going to pass by. It was right near the ocean, kind of along this cliff and this rock ledge. And so I had rocks. So I had a rock ledge behind me and I had two big cedar trees. And then I built the shelter out front. And that made a huge difference for me. Now, before I went into season four, before I got dropped, I mean, I really concentrated and thought about what it's going to be like to be alone in a new place. You know, I've camped alone, but this is going to be a little different. You know, what is it going to be like to be dropped in a new place with no shelter? You know, you don't have time to prepare here. And you don't even know what time you're going to get dropped in the daytime. It kind of depends on where you were in line to get dropped off. I remember I think I got dropped off about 2 o'clock. So I had a few hours to play with. I think it got dark at 7 at that point. But I mean, I was balls to the wall getting a shelter built. I, I just, I needed, I wanted a sturdy shelter. So that was my number one priority. Boom, boom, boom. Cut, cut, stack, build. Get a shelter built with walls so I can sleep. And not only that, of course, it's so rainy there, it's so wet. Gotta have a nice dry shelter, a place to be dry. So shelter was the number one thing I thought about. Day one, hour one, minute one. So, I slept well that night. I was, I was tired. I'd been working my butt off on a shelter. And, uh, yeah, shelter is a big deal. So if you're coming out alone, I don't know. I know you can do a tarp. I know you can do a tent and all that. But I prefer sticks if I'm going to be alone. I just like the feeling of being in some kind of a more solid shelter. It just makes me, makes me feel better.
so yeah, good shelter. You know, the first night is going to be the hardest. First night, you know, the longer you're out here, the longer you just kind of get used to it. You know what I'd also say too? If you want to film yourself, it actually gives you something to do and helps it gives you somebody to talk to. You're talking to the camera. It's not a bad thing. And then you can kind of look over everything and see, I don't know, relive your experience. First night or two, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to uh, settle your mind down. It's going to be, it's hard to sleep probably, but you can do this. The other thing I did before I got dropped on Vancouver is I visualized and I thought about all the worst things that could happen. All of the worst case scenarios, right? What am I going to do if uh, a bear comes through? What am I going to do with the cougar? What am I going to do with the wolf? What am I going to do if it's totally raining and pouring? Like I had this all worked out in my head. How I was going to react. How, what I was going to do. How I would handle it and resolve it and it would be fine. I visualized all these things and I'm not, I'm not a hippy dippy, you know, kind of person to think about stuff like that. But I thought this might be helpful. And I really think it did help to just kind of go through scenarios, worst case scenarios, how you're going to handle yourself, what you're going to do, resolve it and move on. So I might recommend you doing that. I mean, it can't hurt. What is it about being alone? Why, why do so many people kind of want to conquer this, this feeling of the, the dark woods, right? You're really conquering your fears of being alone in, in the dark. There's something really, you know, kind of empowering about being able to sleep outside in the woods by yourself and handle it, you know? I think it's something everybody should, should try to do because it's like, uh, it's, it just gives you a lot of confidence. It gives you, you know, you're, you're capable of so much more than you think you are. So to be able to, to come out in the woods and spend a night by yourself, I mean, it's an accomplishment. And you never know how you're going to react until you do it. That's the thing about the show alone, you know. Some of the early tappers, you know, people kind of give them a hard time. Like, oh, what a wuss and you couldn't handle it. Well, you know. Well, could you handle it? Do you know how you would react getting dropped off in a completely remote foreign environment with nothing and having to start from scratch? I mean, and that's why I think this is attractive, the being out in the wilderness by yourself, testing yourself. It's all about testing yourself and seeing what you're made of, what can you handle, what can you, you know, getting your mind under control is half the battle. It's more than half the battle. It, this is a mind game and that's what alone ends up being mainly is a mind game I mean not only are you alone in the woods at dark but you're just alone for days and weeks on end and it really gets to you how much can you handle mentally you know and on alone you don't have the lights you don't have a nice warm beverage and a full belly <laughs> like I brought a book tonight don't have any reading material you can't write anything down you're just kind of you're you're just you're neglecting that part of your psyche that wants to be engaged all you have is the the camera and that is mentally challenging so above all alone is is a mental game beyond everything beyond the physical, beyond the skills, it's mental. And if you are strong-willed, if you can figure things out, you're gonna probably do okay on that show. But yeah, is it more enjoyable to come out with someone? Oh yeah, definitely. Even just having my dog around is nice. It's just nice to have somebody or someone else with you, but uh, 
there's something to be said for being able to come out on your own in the dark in the woods and being okay with it so if you've never done it I, I highly recommend it you might surprise yourself on how you react either one way or the other it's it's gonna be a test highly recommend it Being alone gives you a lot of time to think, and that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's so quiet tonight. When the coyotes settle down, it's nice and quiet. I love quiet. It's so hard to get quiet, and that's another. It's a really good reason to come out here alone, just to clear your thoughts. Clear your head, stare at your feet, stare at the fire. In my case, I'm just making conversation with a camera, but when you're truly alone, you don't have to talk to anybody. And that's nice sometimes. I have no cell phone coverage here. I'm way, way off the road. I walked, I hiked in. And it's off a back road anyway. So if you're going to do this, make sure you put yourself out in a place where it's harder to bail. You know, if you're too close to your car or too close to your house or wherever you might be, it's too easy to bail in the middle of the night or at any moment you feel uncomfortable. So make make sure you're you're committed and you commit yourself to somewhere where you are in the wilderness. Cuz I would not want to walk out of here at night. It would be just about impossible. You, you, I'd totally get lost. Trying to get back to the car. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of Dave and I out on Vancouver Island. One night he, he thought he left his knife on the rocks where we fished. And he couldn't find his knife. It was a big deal. Not having a knife is a huge deal. So like one o'clock in the morning, I mean it's eating him alive. He thinks he left it on the rocks and then tide's gonna come in over the rocks where we fish and he's gonna lose his knife. He's already already going crazy because he doesn't know where it's at. So he takes his headlamp and he says, I'm going out to the rocks. I gotta go see if my knife is out there. And you know, once we got in bed at night, it was like such a relief. It was a relief to be warm, for one thing. Just uh, as cold all the time. If I could get my in my bag and be warm, you know, it was so great to go to bed. I didn't want to get up, so I'm like, okay, go. He leaves our cabin, if you remember on the show. Remember on season four, we built a cabin. So he goes out the cabin, and I'm laying there, and, you know, being... Fishing next to the ocean, where we would fish, we would fish over deep water on these rock cliffs that jutted out into the ocean. And it always, you know, if I had to worry about one thing, it would be us falling into the ocean right there. It was iffy. He's gone maybe 10, 15 minutes. I'd already drifted back to sleep, and I hear him screaming, Honey! Oh my gosh, I was so terrified. I thought he fell into the ocean. I'm struggling to get out of my bag and get a headlight, headlamp on, and get a headlamp on. And I'm like, I'm coming. And our cabin just, I, I was pushing like the wrong way on the door and I, I couldn't get it open. I, I was just, I thought he was going to die. And I ran out there and you got to go through the woods and like up this cliff and over these rocks and I and I realized when I got there he hadn't fallen in his headlamp went out and it is so pitch black there on Vancouver Island you can't see your hand in front of your face we had these these headlamps they gave us that were 
USB powered. So we had to plug them into like a, a rechargeable battery. And there was no indicator to tell you like if they were low or high and they just were crap anyway. Man, his headlamp went out on the rocks right next to the ocean while he was trying to find his, his knife. Oh, that was so scary. So had I not been there, had he been truly alone, he would have had to spend the night out on the rocks because there's no way you could find your way back to camp. That was just a horrible situation. Those headlamps were horrible. Oh, we gave the we gave the production company some words about those headlamps after that because that's just not safe. Oh, guys, I'm getting chilly. Grab my coat. I think I'm ready to just stretch out in my sleeping bag and be warm all over. I'm ready. I think it's time to go, go in. Hey, it's getting cold. This thing fluffed up. It's so bright in here, I love it. Check this out. I've got another canvas here. And I'm going to hang that up on the door. See this? I've got like a door here. I just put an extra... I just put an extra piece of canvas right here. And I'm like in a little cocoon now. And it just feels really great. So I highly recommend a shelter. Something with sticks and wood. Uh, I like to be enclosed. I don't want to be just out when I'm by myself. So, there you have it. Now I'm going to get my long johns on. It is cold. It's going to be even colder tonight. So, I'm going to get set up and I'm going to read a little. Just heard a barred owl. Hopefully it'll hoot again. Oh, my feet are cold. I only brought one pair of socks. I don't know what I was thinking. I should wear two. Boy, does this bring back memories. Of course, it wasn't this cheery, but, you know, Mongolia and Vancouver Island. Getting ready for bed. Always having the camera rolling. <laughs> there you go. Oh. oh, it's nice and cozy. It's gonna be a chilly one tonight. So what I'm gonna do now is just, uh, I'm just gonna turn the lights off and get my headlamp out and read a little bit and, and just this kind of coyote, I guess. Just gonna settle in for the night. Try to stay warm. Get a pillow set up. Ooh, it feels good to be in this bag. All right, guys, that's going to do it, I think, for tonight. I'll see you in the morning. Turn the camera on if something exciting happens, but I'm going to sleep. Good night. See you in the morning. Well, good morning, guys. <laughs> it is morning, although it's still dark. I've been waiting for a couple hours to get up. I've been awake a while, but it should be getting light here pretty soon. It's almost 7 o'clock in the morning. I think I'm going to go out and get a fire started and watch the sun come up. I slept pretty good. It was only one time I thought I heard something outside. And uh, what I usually do is just go, hey, get out of here, like that. You know, hit the side or 
If I'm in a tarp, I'll hit the tarp or the tent and um, whatever it is takes off. The instinct, I think, is to stay still and like don't move. But I think that's the wrong idea. I think you want to just make noise and take charge, you know? You need to be the thing that's scaring away the other thing. So that's, that's my take on it. But anyway, I'm going to... I'm going to put my fleece pants on over my pants and crawl on out of here. I don't want to get out of this bag. It's nice and warm and it's chilly. So stand by, we'll get a fire going. Well guys, you made it through the night. This is how you do it. This is the reward. To wake up to all this beautiful daylight, nice fire and a hot cup of coffee. And you're in complete silence, listening to the woods wake up. This is, just makes it so worth it. This is the payoff, the daylight, when you can relax again and, and really see what's going on. Got my little, my secret weapon. I'm gonna get that heating up here on the coals. All right, what I got going on for breakfast. See this? This is sourdough. This is leftover sourdough pizza dough. And I'm gonna make fry bread out here with cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna make elephant ears on the campfire for breakfast. It's gonna be amazing. You won't believe how awesome these things are. 
make these all the time from leftover pizza dough at home and it's sourdough it's been uh, in the fridge for a couple days so it's extra sour it's gonna be great I've never tried to do this on a campfire but I'm sure it'll be fine I got enough for two of these I'm just gonna get some dough some flour on it and just gonna slowly work it apart oh it smells good you can smell that sourdough in there that's perfect size for that little pan to get a flat surface ah hey now it's feisty it's feisty there we go much better all right let's get this thing over Oh man, look at that. All right, it's done. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. There it is. Beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. Oh man. That's crazy good. A bite? Here, take a bite. I wish you were here. Life is good. Well guys, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Love to hear your comments below. Tell me if you've ever gone uh, solo camping and what you think and maybe some tips and tricks for everyone else. Read the comments below, guys. It's a good place to uh, gather information. And as always, if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe. Hit that button right there. Hit it. All right, this girl in the woods. Until next time, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.